So welcome to Amazing Food and Drink. I am absolutely delighted to have Vim de Jong, who is the owner of Hope Brewery in Dublin. Welcome along, Vim. Thank you very much, Colin. Delighted to be here. It's great to have you on board. So tell us a bit about yourself and your background, Vim. Okay, well, we started our brewery five years ago and, and uh, I was already uh, 51 or 52 at the time. So I have a whole career uh, in a different sector be, before me. Um, I, I grew up in the, in the packaging industry. I worked for an Irish company called Clondalkin Group. And um, I, I had a, a wide range of roles. I traveled all over the world with them and, um, and finished off um, in 2010 with them um, when I was responsible for their mergers and acquisitions. Clondalkin was a, a big multinational printing and packaging company uh, at the time. Um, so, so when we finished, when I finished up there, I was, I was really looking to do something for myself, and and, and I struggled to find what it was. As, as a Dutch guy, I was, I grew up in Holland. Um, I thought, well, maybe I should set up a bicycle distribution business. Um, but I also grew up with um, with beers and with Belgian beers and uh, tasty beers. So when I kind of went around a couple of um, um, other projects, which was mainly interim management uh, for a printing company and for a, um, a building materials company. Uh, a very good friend of mine um, in Holland had just bought into a brewery in, in Holland and um, he had sold his own business for a good bit of money. And he said, listen, why don't we set up a, a brewery in Dublin? And, and what I liked about that it was it's a product that I'm passionate about it's a it's a product that I enjoy drinking and uh, obviously um, but it was also a very growing industry at the time and I came from the packaging industry which which had been in decline for a long time and and um, and for good reasons you know people want to have less packaging on their uh, on their food and drink but on everything you want less packaging so so our business was 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 struggling in 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 some areas now in other countries uh, where the sustainability is not as high up on the agenda we were doing quite well and in germany we had a plant that made biodegradable plastics so they were all doing well but in general our business was under pressure so the thoughts of entering an industry with double digit growth um was very exciting yeah. so we took we took the big step i i you know, once you hit 50, you can um, you can cash in your pension fund. And, and that's what I did. I, I cashed in my pension fund. And um, together with my uh, my friend in Holland, <clears throat> who already had a brewery in Holland, we set up Hope Beer. Um, now, I didn't do it alone here. I have a very good friend here in Ireland as well, who was looking for a, a new challenge. Um, he joined us and my wife was part of the team. So the three of us are the founders of, uh, or the four of us are the founders of Hope Beer. And um, we, yeah, we kind of thought, thought about it, but we didn't really think about it that long. We kind of jumped in the deep end very quickly and, um, and just went out and bought ourselves a beautiful brewery. Think or swim type stuff? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I'm going to ask you, are you bathing in that uh, real ale? Because I'm telling you now, you're a very fresh face. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> if that's what it does for you, you need to send me more. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, that's, you know, growing growing your hair and, uh, and a beard in, uh, in lockdown um, probably helps you with the, uh, the, the youthful looks. <laughs> well, it's worked wonders for you. I have to say, though, I, I'm really uh, admiring what you've done because that's a really brave decision after working in one industry for the best part of your, your working career and to come out into something completely different is it's a big step, real big step. Ah, it was a big step. And in particular, uh, I won't tell you what the salary I was on in, uh, in Clondalkin Group, but, you know, it was... It was, it was nice. Yeah, it was very <laughs> nice. No, it, was, it was hard work, but it was very good. And certainly the first couple of years in uh, starting your own business, you know, you can imagine what your salary is and um, it's, uh, it's somewhere, somewhere between zero and, uh, and zero. 
Uh, so, so, but that was okay. That was okay. You know, we 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 had a bit of fat built in to the system to uh, uh, to get going. And you know, really, our, our, I, I kind of look at our success over the years in, in in a couple of challenges. So, one of the first successes we had was I think we were two two and a half years in when we managed to get a bank loan. <laughs> yeah, you know, and start, but, but don't underestimate a, a startup business. You know, they don't mind taking your deposits and your uh, and, and doing your wages and all that and paying all uh, uh, your, your bills. But getting a bank loan is a big deal, uh, mm -hmm. certainly in Ireland. So when we that was a big milestone in our business, and another big milestone was when we were able to pay ourselves uh, uh, a bit of a salary and then that got a little bit better. Well, it's still, still a long way off, but, uh, well, but that, doesn't matter. that doesn't matter. Um, Brilliant. I was going to ask you a question and you've sort of answered it. You know, how did the brewery start? So basically started with your friend in Holland buying in and then you thinking, oh, that's maybe not a bad idea for us. Yeah, yeah. So he is not a brewer either. I'm not a brewer. And... Um, so we worked along the uh, the Ocean Eleven um, uh, concept. Uh, so we hired specialists for everything, and we got a really good consultant uh, to help us select the right brewery. Um, I, I was very keen to buy local at the start, but at the end of the day, we we just we went for a German-built brewery, and these guys produce state-of-the-art equipment, and 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 even to date. Uh, you know, anybody that comes into the brewery says, listen, this is a great brewery. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's five years on. So so our our equipment was really, really good. And that's what I meant as well by going in the deep end. You know, we spent, uh, big, we spent big, whereas normally when breweries start, they might start with a small kit and get it second hand and then build up and build up and build up to finally getting um a, a nice new brewery when when the business can afford it so we just went ahead and did it and did you buy over an existing brewery is that how it worked or, or did no, they sell it for no. you? so we we bought brand new state-of-the-art equipment brilliant absolutely yeah. and where, where are you based then we are um on the north side of dublin um uh, in in a, in a in a town called kilbarrick uh, not far from um, the, the sea um, uh, from Holt. Uh, a lot of people know Holt. That's uh, yeah, yeah. that's where we have a lot of our customers in Malahide and um, very uh, boys down there now. Very yeah, boys. no, it's it's a great spot and it's a it's a good spot for for bars and restaurants uh, uh, and off licenses, which is where a lot of our business is. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And you know, t tell us some of the challenges that, that you faced when when you started off and. Um, you know, how you've overcome them as well, then? Well, I mean, the first challenge was, you know, <laughs> how are we going to brew this beer? You know, we didn't, we needed to hire a brewer. So we were very lucky. We, our first entry into the beer was we got our beers brewed by another brewery. And it was really just to, to test the marketing and to test a few of the, the recipes that we had put together, uh, together with a, another part of our Ocean 11 team. And, um, uh, we brewed with this guy and we just kind of built up a lovely rapport. And, and when I said that we were looking for, um, for a brewer and he knew what kind of equipment we were about to buy, he was very keen to join us. So we, we got really one of the top brewers in Ireland uh, to get started with. So that was a big challenge. A couple of challenges we probably got wrong. We, um, we wanted to be different. So, we started off, our three first beers were uh, a wheat beer, um, an IPA, a strong IPA, and what we called a blonde ale. Now, a blonde ale is effectively like a pale ale, but we were quite, diff quite different because most breweries started off with a red, a pale, and a stout, mm -hmm. and we didn't have those three beers. The other thing we did to be a little bit different was we decided to put our beer into 33 CL bottles, which are the small bottles. Mm -hmm. And that was probably a mistake because um, we were at the time, 80% of the shelves in off licenses 
were filled with half liter bottles. Um, at the now, seventy five percent of the shelves are cans, and we had neither, so we just had these thirty three cl bottles. And, and quite frankly, Colin, they they did not sell, um, and uh, and that made our our struggle to to not just to get into customers but to get repeat sales uh, more difficult mm -hmm. um, so now we have you can see it on the background now we have a canning line and and we have cans and you know certainly in the last two years 90 percent of our sales have been in cans but but that was a big challenge was to find the right packaging concept and we got that wrong um, in retrospect now we're kind of happy with it because restaurants love 33 cl bottles and we are only one of two breweries uh, left in ireland that package their beer in 33 cl bottles so now we are the go-to brilliant restaurants so, so your mistake actually paid dividends in the end in the end it did but it made for a bit of a struggle at the start yeah and how long did it take you to, to realize that you know what you'd done was wrong uh, of course, we didn't want to admit to our mistake. <laughs> so, no one ever does, Ben. No one ever longer, does. you know. I've never been, but, I've never been uh, wrong in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we never, we never invested in in five hundred milliliter uh, packaging um, equipment. Uh, we went straight to cans, and um, we first started off with a, a contract canning company, who basically come in here, put our beers in cans, and then uh, go out again. And since the start of this year. We have our own canning line, so we were able to invest, uh, so, and and, um, and that's worked out really well. Brilliant! And I, I must say, ha having uh, had a couple of your cans in my hand, I absolutely love the packaging. I love the texture. I love the colours. I think it's really innovative. It's something I've never seen before. Yeah, we 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 have a very good part of our Ocean Eleven team is a, is a friend of ours who has a, a very successful packaging design company in Amsterdam. And mm. uh, he came over to Dublin and spent uh, a week with us. Um, he's a guy we grew up with in school um, and, and he works for big brands now. So, so he said, listen, you need a story. Your, your product needs a story. Uh, you need a good brand, but also you need a logo. So if you look at the, the first two letters of our um, of our brand, mm -hmm. that's our logo. Yeah, so the HO is our logo. And if you turn it upside down, it either looks a little bit like an anchor or it looks like the female sign, whatever. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but um, that's, so, it, it, you know, you need to be able to wear your logo on your sleeve yeah. uh, was his concept, but also the story. So each of our beers has a little story attached to our locality. <laughs> Local is probably the most important word in our business, Brilliant. as well as good beer, but local. So we are a local artisan producer of great beers with a lot of flavor. Um, and for example, the beers that you see there, uh, one is called Pass If You Can, and it tells the story of a highwayman who lived in Rush, just north of us here. We have a couple of customers uh, up there. And um, he, his patch was just near Blanchard Sound. Mm -hmm. And they named his patch after him and they named it Pass If You Can. And what's interesting is we were at a beer festival there three or four years ago. And this, this guy comes up to us and says, I live in Pass If You Can. So even though he is well gone, the, 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 the little townland is still there called Pass If You Can. Brilliant. Absolutely. And the other story is about uh, the dart. We, there was just when the, the dart uh, got going here, that's the local transport um, uh, train. There was two guys who skived off school and went on a little journey uh, for the afternoon. Uh, they've done it before, but this time when they got to Dunleary, which is where the dart stopped in 85 or 86, they, they got off the dart and said, oh, listen, there's... There's a ferry. Let's get on the ferry. They took the ferry to Hollyhead, decided to carry on, took the train to London, at which days they said, oh, God, we better go home. 
um, uh, and don't forget, these were they were thirteen and fourteen years old, um, very streetwise uh, North Dublin kids. Um, so they they took the train to the airport, and you know in those days there wasn't all the same security. They somehow got straight through security. Oh, my mum is right behind me, and boom, they were gone, and jumped on a plane, but ended up in New York. And this is a true story, yeah. And Brilliant. Yeah, when they got to New York, Uncle Sam picked them up and um, uh, and sent them back to uh, to where they came from. But um, but it's a great story. They're I think they're looking at making a movie out of it now, even. And Absolutely. we like that connection with the locality. the The Dart Line is right beside the brewery as well, so that gives another uh, you know kind of taste for it. And that's why we called it Hop On. So Hop On the Dart. And come and see us in the brewery. Absolutely brilliant. I love that. Maybe that's not possible at the minute, but that'll be back soon. Touch wood, it'll be uh, very, very soon. That is, they're two brilliant stories. And have all of the cans got a story behind them? All of them have a little story. All of our core beers have a little story behind them. So we have five core beers. We have a seasonal beer. We have a summer seasonal and a winter seasonal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then we do limited edition beers. So um, as we are celebrating our, um, our fifth year uh, in business, we are here, I'll show you. Um, we are doing, um, <laughs> it's a bit corny now this, but we're doing a special beer uh, and we have our founders and our brewers on the beer uh, to celebrate five years in business. And, Brilliant. Uh, and that's, a, that's a strong, IPA called Overnight Oats. So there's oats in it and uh, oat milk. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so they're a little bit different and a little bit special, the limited editions. Brilliant. And if someone wanted to actually order beers, could you do that? Would you think if I wanted a, a speciality beer, depending mm -hmm. how many it was? I mean, I'm only asking now. Our, our, our minimum batch size is 2,000 litres. So that's a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a big party. <laughs> yeah. You can want a decent priority for that. Oh, uh, so no, that, that probably doesn't work. But you know, we've we've done beers for people where we've we've brewed them on our pilot kit. But it, that's not really our business. Um, it's uh, it, it's more about um, you know producing beers and then we sell. We don't sell them direct. So we in Ireland, you need a license to sell beer directly, and we don't have that license. So we sell all our beers through off licenses. Um, a lot of the local off licenses do very well with our beer, but also um, O'Brien's, which is a, a chain of off licenses, carry out a chain of off licenses across Ireland. Uh, we have a good few super values. We have um, uh, done stores that carry our beer. So there is uh, and Tesco soon. Um, so that that's how we distribute our retail uh, product. And then we have bars and restaurants um, beyond trade, which are Thank God, opening up again. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So you're, you're actually sort of started small and you're starting to grow and grow and grow. That, that's a, a brilliant story, absolutely class. Yeah. I, yeah, I was just yeah. trying to extend that a wee bit by, you know, bespoke beers, but well, that'll be for another, another year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask you, Vim, how did you develop your flavours? How did you come up with those ideas? Well, the first, the first was um, uh, one of our team, <laughs> of the Ocean Eleven, there was the in Holland. Uh, my mate had a, a connection with a, a guy called Derek Walsh, and he was a a beer sommelier. I didn't know they existed at the time, but they do. Uh, but he was a judge on a lot of the beer competitions, um, and um, and he was a Canadian guy, but he lived right across the road from the brewery in Holland. Mm -hmm. So. He helped, he came over here and again, looked with us as to what kind of beers would be good for the Irish market. See, uh, beers are very local and, and, and Ireland tend to look more to America for their beer flavors than they do to England, for example. Mm -hmm. <coughs> in, in Holland, they look more towards Belgium for their beer flavors. <clears throat> and in Germany, I don't know what they do. Um, <laughs> They make their own. Yeah, they make their own. So um, so he helped us develop the first three recipes. And then after that, how we 
how we went about it is we we would do a limited edition and if the limited edition was very successful and our first limited edition was a, a session ipa and um, we said oh this is a great beer <coughs> the next step was we made it our summer seasonal beer and um and again it did very well and then after that we decided okay well we'll make it our hop on session ipa so that's how it developed and, and it was basically the brewer uh, who came up with the initial recipe, refined it a bit for the summer seasonal and refined it again for the hop on. And that's where we are now. And, and we're continuously looking to improve the beer. But it, once a beer is established, it's, it's, it's like a chocolate bar. You don't want to change too much. Yeah, absolutely. Because people get used to it and, and they don't like change. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And have you seen an increase in the demand for, for craft beers over what we would call traditional brands? I think there is. I, uh, the, the craft beer industry, when we started five years ago, was growing double digit. Mm -hmm. It came from a very low base. I, I think the market share of craft beer at the time was one and a half or two percent. And it grew to about three percent uh, in the space of two or three years. According to the stats, and they're not very good, that has plateaued now. But but there's a couple of things that are happening. For example, Diageo brought out Hop House 13. Mm -hmm. um, and it alone, and, and, and we don't like calling it a craft beer because it's made by Diageo, but it is a beer that is trying to encroach on the market of craft beers. Yeah. <laughs> it has about three or four percent market share by itself. Um, Five Lamps is another craft beer that was acquired by CNC. So as soon as they were acquired by CNC, they're not a craft beer anymore. Yeah. Um, Franciscan Well uh, was one of the first craft beers in Ireland. Um, they were acquired by Coors. So you, you can't really call them a, a craft beer anymore. Uh, and then the last one was... Um, Franciscan Well, uh, no, not Franciscan Well, um, Eight Degrees, they were acquired by uh, Irish distillers. So again, they're part of a large multinational company. And, you know, what we think defines a craft beer is that it's, a, you know, an, an artisan producer, relatively small, of uh, um, locally produced craft beers. Um, so, I mean, you could argue that some of these guys, you know, Franciscan Wells still make beautiful beers uh, in a small brewery, as well as in the big brewery. Same with Eight Degrees. They still brew their beers in a relatively small brewery. Um, <coughs> it just depends a little bit how you define it. Yeah, well, well, but in not... some of the stats, they've been excluded. That means that our 3%, even though it's static, is actually increasing because it's just with less participants. Yeah, gotcha. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll actually think that Franciscan Well is still artisan because they're one of our contributors as well. <laughs> I know they are, and they make fantastic beers, and, and, and I love going uh, to, uh, to Franciscan Well. But, but some of their really popular beers are made in a bigger brewer. Yeah. And, and that's, that's progress. That's success, you know. Um, you know it's popular once that happens, don't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look, you, you mentioned sure Shane, Shane was a great help in our business at the start. He um, he helped me find our first brewer, and uh, he is he is like the godfather of uh, of Irish craft beer, and uh, and a wonderful help to us at the start. Um, so um, uh, I I have no nothing negative to say about uh, small craft beer breweries being bought by a larger entity it just you know it's just different yeah i was just going to say there um just thinking in, in terms of help you know that, that was good you got help from them any others help you did you get any financial help or any help from from false island or or you know any board be anybody yeah, so, so what who've been very good to us is the local enterprise office uh here on north county dublin it's called fingal fingal local enterprise office and they have been <clears throat> lifesavers to us first of all 
I went to all these courses to see, you know, uh, how to set up your own business. Um, at that time, I was still looking at a, a bike distribution business. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then I moved into the, with them and <clears throat> they helped with a feasibility study grant. They helped with the first employment grants. Um, they helped with uh, expansion grants. Um, and even up to last year, our canning line, uh, they helped us with the, uh, with the purchase of that. So they've been fantastic. Board Bia also, um, we, are, we are members of Origin Green, which is Board Bia's sustainability, certified sustainability program. Um, they've been great help with, with information, but also with marketing support. And, um, and, and at the moment, even they're doing a, an eight week, um, I think it's podcasts on, um, on the craft beer industry in Ireland. And, but they also have offices all around uh, Europe and um, I think are even around the world. So for the first time now, we, we have engaged with a, a board beer. Um, it's, it's called a brand ambassador who, who will be based in France for us for um, uh, 18 months to help promote our brand on a, on a part-time basis. But it's, it's a really good program. That's brilliant. <clears throat> So that's great. I mean, that's great for, for people watching this to understand there is help out there from the local enterprise unit and, and indeed Board Bay. That, that, that's yeah. tremendous. And it's a lovely industry to be in. Like all the craft beer brewers, they will help each other. So if I need a bag of hops or a bag of malt, <clears throat> all I have to do is call around or we have a big WhatsApp group and, you know, it, it won't take long to find it. And uh, we just pick it up from each other, replace it or somebody needs to come over here and get something or one of the machines breaks down and um, there is never a problem. We, we like to help each other. Love it. Absolutely love it. And what, what you mentioned earlier was about, you know, local is really important and sustainability. Is that important to you? And is it important to the food and drink industry in general? I think it's very important. Um, uh, beer, beer is a difficult, uh, business to associate with sustainability because you know we we do have a lot of waste streams and um uh, and being sustainable is, is not that easy but our, our biggest waste stream is is grain and um because we are based in in the city um it it, it was difficult to find uh, an outlet for our grain mm -hmm. most breweries in ireland are based in the countryside and yeah. Any farmer will love to pick up the spent grain and give it to their cows. So at the start, we <clears throat> oh, we we had to bring it to a farmer who would mix it in with something and spread it out over a field. Then we found um, a guy who would make biogas out of the grain, but it all costs money. But then all of a sudden we found a guy who has a... Uh, a a factory or a big place beside us here and he also owns a farm and he said oh, I'll take the grain off you so he now picks it up so now we've turned that circle that our grain is actually being used for uh, feed for animal feed <coughs> and and that's great uh, because we bought adding such... to your sustainability then sorry adding to your sustainability yeah absolutely um, because our brewery is is quite new, um, it is in itself very efficient. So we, you know, Germans like their sustainability as well, obviously. Um, and we have a couple of features on the brew house that um, that that let us use the 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 energy that we have created, uh, uh, reuse it to produce hot water, and um, and we have a program to reduce the amount of water we use. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, why is sustainability important for the food industry? It's important for everybody. And um, <clears throat> and we're part of everybody. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I, I like that. And, and tell me, uh, in terms of, you mentioned off trade and on trade and bars and restaurants. How difficult did you find it getting into the, getting your beer into the industry? Yeah, it was difficult. You know, I mean, the... the the, the, the first pub we went to was the pub that we were drinking in. And um, the first off license was the off license where we, um, we, we used to buy our wine in. And the first supermarket was 
the supermarket that um, where we do our, our shopping. And I, I remember my wife went to the manager in the, in the local super value here and said, uh, you know, would you take our beer? You know, and he said, yeah, okay, yeah, we'll take it. And, and she said, now my goal is that you will spend more with me than I spend with you. <laughs> and he said, ah, that will never, that will never happen. <laughs> but I can tell you, it, it's happening now, big time. And <laughs> But our beer is pouring in in my tennis club. <clears throat> it's pouring in uh, uh, in the, the the yacht club here in Holt. So it was a lot of family connections that got us going. <clears throat> With um, now that we've built up a bit of brand recognition, <clears throat> we actually get people coming to us looking for it, um, and and it's it's become easier. But. Um, uh, I was telling you before that we have we have joined up forces with Northeast. Uh, Northeast is a um, uh, a beer distributor that cover the whole Ireland uh, island of Ireland um, and uh, with a great reputation. Uh, so we were delighted uh, um, uh, to hook up with them. But they, in certain areas, face the same problem that we had three or four years ago. Yeah. Even though they have the reputation, our beer does not have the reputation yet. In Cork, for example, you know, um, Cork is always a difficult market to crack for any brand from Dublin. But with the help of Northeast, who who have local representation there, we're now getting into um, off licenses and hopefully a few bars as well soon in Cork. And 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 um, <clears throat> we we did not sell our beer in Northern Ireland, but we now have our first beer pouring in a pub in uh, in John Hewitt in, in Belfast and <clears throat> also our beer is available in about 30 or 35 off licenses uh, across Northern Ireland and also in the super values in, in Northern Ireland. So <clears throat> that's what distribution does for you. It 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 gives you the help. But and and, and they when they go into a, a new customer, you know the, the customer knows them so well he will take their word for it. Brilliant. And I can't wait to go and taste that pint in the John here. It's not very far from where I'm sitting. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ask you a, a question there um, about food and beer. Right. So the tradition is like wine and cheese and wine with food. Do you see that um, there's a relationship between food and beer? Yeah. We, we from the start, um, designed our beers to be great with food. So we have a, a citrusy wheat beer, which is dry, citrusy, uh, and is fantastic with seafood. Um, <clears throat> so we always made restaurants a big part of our focus. Our IPA is a full flavored IPA. It's great with barbecue, uh, steaks, burgers. Um, <coughs> our path, if you can here, <clears throat> Is a little bit sweeter. Um, it's great with um, spicy foods, you know, where the, the sweetness in the beer just takes the edge off the spiciness. Maybe like an Indian or something. Yeah, exactly. But but when and, and we have food pairing suggestions on each of our cans. <clears throat> so w with this guy Derek Walsh, he was really into food pairings of beer, and and we loved that whole idea of pairing beers with food, and we've tried it and. To pair beers with cheese is 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 really nice, and, and most beers will go well with cheese. But even the, even the little exploration of finding out, oh, this beer is nice with this cheese, you know, buy five or six uh, different beers or buy five or six different cheeses, and just try a little bit and see what goes well with uh, uh, together is great fun. So yeah, no, as far as we're concerned, beer uh, is the new wine, and and not everybody likes wine. So you see a, a, a nice craft beer in a restaurant more and more. Whereas I think craft beers in particular make nice combinations with food, much more so than Heineken. And, and I know Guinness is fantastic with oysters, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, it's a marketing thing. <laughs> <laughs> our grunt, uh, our wheat beer, is much nicer with oysters than um, uh, than a pint of Guinness. 
Absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm actually salivating here, and it's well you can't hear my tummy rumbling. But <laughs> you know, on this sum up, we're actually hoping to extend, you know, the, the, the if you like reach of, of the businesses. So where can we reach you? If someone wants to get your, your beer into their restaurant or pub or off license, how do we reach them the on? Well, all all our um <clears throat> Off licenses are on our website. So hopebeer.ie, there's a listing of all our, uh, our retailers. <clears throat> we have um, Hope Beer Dublin is our Facebook, Twitter, and um, uh, Instagram handle. <clears throat> and that will also give you a good idea. But if you want to, um, if you have a specific question, just send us an email to info at hopebeer.ie and we'll get back to you immediately with any questions you have. Um, it's probably the easiest way to do it. Yeah, and a, 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 and a B2B setting, the same thing. So if I, I've got a pub and I want your beer, just contact that way as well. Just contact me or call me. Uh, I'm sure my telephone number is on the website as well. And uh, um, uh, yes, absolutely. Brilliant. We'll put links under underneath the video. That's brilliant. Right, so, right. Then, where do you see the future of, of the industry and, and the craft beer industry going? Well, where I would hope it goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. I, like that. that was good. I, I hope. I hope um, the craft beer industry in Ireland will ultimately be as strong as the craft beer industry in the United States, mm -hmm. where certain regions in the United States, fifteen to twenty percent of the beer market is craft beer, is locally brewed craft beer. <clears throat> Here, I said it to you earlier. It's about 3% or maybe it's 4%. I actually think we've done very well. We've done much better in the in the last 18 months of lockdown mm -hmm. than, than the big brands. Although they're making up for it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in, in a retail setting, we've, we, we as the craft beer industry have done very well uh, because people at drinking at home are looking for maybe a little bit more of an experience than because they weren't sitting with friends and cheers, here's, oh, it's a great pint of Guinness. No, they're kind of sitting at home drinking a beer. Yeah. So I think we've come out of it very well, but three or 4% is still a long way off. 10, 15, there's regions, uh, <clears throat> Portland, Oregon, uh, craft beer is over 20% of the, of the market. People just drink craft beer. They drink local beers. They don't drink... Um, and, and, and you know, there's plenty of big brands uh, in the US. So if we could get somewhere near that, then we're sorted. And, and I do think that is possible and I do think we're there. And I think if you put all the, the flavorsome beers together, and I'm including uh, Hop House 13 in that category, mm -hmm. I think we're already at eight or nine or 10%. So, so we're getting there. And um, there is no reason why, you know, Ireland, who as a nation are so into local produce in artisan produced, great food, uh, great drinks. <coughs> look at the whiskey industry, look at the cheeses, uh, everything. Um, uh, that beer can't be part of that as well. And uh, I'd say the only thing we'll struggle uh, to turn into a, a locally produced industry is is wine. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish the weather was different to help that, but I can't yeah. see it. And I can't see it. <laughs> and, and lastly, this is a six million dollar question: What's the future for Hope Brewery and Vim Dion and the the Ocean's Eleven crew? Yeah. Well, we're we're still bang in the middle of building our brand and. Um, uh, our brand is now well known in North County Dublin and probably in a couple of areas around Dublin. Uh, but I would love our brand to be strong in all of Ireland. Um, <clears throat> we do a little bit of export, but that's not our main priority. It's, it's, it's fantastic to, to have Paddy's Bar, Patrick's Bar in Paris pouring three of our beers, which is the truth, you know, and it's, it's incredible. And it, it makes me very proud uh, that that is the case. Uh, 
and we have very good uh, bar restaurant uh, bar customers in in Italy uh, and and even in 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 one bar in in Russia. Um, but my goal would be that seventy five to eighty percent of our volume is is sold in Ireland and that we're at reasonably full capacity. We will then have a very good business. Um, and then, you know, listen, I'm, I told you we started when I was 51, so I'm now uh, 56, going on 57. So I'm not going to be doing this when I'm 75. So, you know, still a good few years to go. But, um, um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, if, 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 if a craft beer brand um, can survive a change of ownership, like Franciscan Well have done extremely well, like um, eight degrees have done extremely well. Well, then you've you've done something really, really good, and um, uh, we still have a bit to go for that. Well, I, I have to say that was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. And from everyone on Amazing Food and Drink, I would like to raise a metaphoric glass and say slancha, or should I say prost to Hope Beer Brewery? And I wish well, you all the best. <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Thank that you very much. First class, thoroughly enjoyed it, and I absolutely know categorically that our viewers will enjoy that too. Um, so look, right. until the next time, which, which we'll come back and we'll have a chat, it was lovely having you on. Okay, brilliant, Colin. And let me know when you're ready to do um, uh, to come over here, and uh, we'd love to have you and uh, show you around. Can't wait. Thanks very much, Vim. Bye-bye.